Hello friends, I welcome you all to the first lecture in the lecture series on the topic of finite element methods, better known as FEM. I am Rajiv Verma, working as an associate professor in the mechanical department of NIT Kurukshetra. My email address is rajivkkr at the red yahoo.com and the mobile number is 8295868855. The finite element method has already gained its importance. The main reason for this is that very complex bodies consisting of all sort of various loads and material variations can easily be modeled using FEM. Now when we talk about ease in modeling, we are comparing this advantage of FEM with other methods which were existing prior to the development of FEM which were basically analytical methods and finite difference method. Indeed it is going to be seen that FEM can give solutions to problems for which no analytical solution exists. But then this is the advantage of every numerical method. Every numerical method is going to give you solutions to problem for which we do not have any analytical solutions. So basically this is not an advantage of FEM. When compared to FDM which is finite difference method it will be seen that FEM can tackle bodies with complex shapes with the relative ease which is difficult to be done with FEM. FDM sorry. But as far as the mathematical theory of FDM is concerned, it happens to be simpler compared to FEM. So this is not really a comparison. While the theory of FDM is easy, theory of FEM happens to be a bit tough. But on the negative side, FDM cannot tackle complex boundaries, that is uh, geometries while bodies with, with complex geometries can easily be handled with FEM. Of course, there are other methods which have been developed after FEM. The finite element method has already gained its importance. The main reason for this is that very complex bodies consisting of all sort of various loads and material variations now this lecture series is going to be based upon the course curriculum defined for the mechanical students of MTech and IT Kurukshetra and is going to be of use for both mechanical and civil students for MTech and PhD courses. But some problems existing in other branches of engineering can also be solved using FEM. The course contents are introduction of finite element method. We are going to talk about some historical backgrounds, engineering applications, and we are going to compare FEM with other methods. Then some lectures are going to be devoted to integral formulations and variational methods, weighted residual method, weak formulations, related methods, then comes the finite element techniques such as discretization, element shapes, size and node locations, interpolation functions, boundary conditions, concepts of compatibility and completeness, convergence criteria, Lagrange and Hermit polynomials. Then coming to the applications of FEM, we are going to discuss the applications to problem existing in the domain of solid mechanics and structure. We are going to deal with the FEM development of uh, a bar element, a beam, two dimensional cases such as stress strain problems related to plane stress, plane strains, axisymmetric problems are also going to be discussed. And then at the end we are going to deal with the three dimensional cases. Then coming to some more applications, we are going to talk about heat transfer problems, 
where we are going to talk about the Galakian approach for one dimensional, two dimensional and three dimensional steady state problems involving conduction, convection and radiations. Transient problems are also going to be discussed. Then comes some application regarding to fluid mechanics. We are going to discuss in viscid incompressible problems. Then viscous flow is going to be discussed, a stream function and some lectures are going to be devoted to solution of incompressible and compressible fluid film lubrication problems. And at the end we are going to devote some time to the steady state and transient field problems and we are going to do the computer programming of practically all the methods which are going to be developed under this particular course. Then coming to reference books, there, haven't, there happen to be plenty of books available in the market but we are going to concentrate upon the books written on this particular topic by Zinkevich, by Hubner, by J.N. Reddy, by S.S. Rao and the lecture series is primarily based upon the book on FEM by Logan which is published by Thomson Brooks. Nature is full of phenomena and all these phenomena happen to be dynamic in nature which are governed by transient differential equations. Talking about mechanical engineering, a mechanical engineering graduate studies about phenomena in the field of heat transfer, solid mechanics, fluid mechanics, economics etc. And since it is desirable to optimize the working of the system, the performance analysis becomes an essential part. Traditionally all these models were simple and it was possible to analyze them using analytical methods to obtain exact solutions. But as these models become more and more complex, it becomes impossible for the analytical methods to be used and thus came in numerical methods. These analytical solutions are solutions of ordinary or partial differential equations. They are mathematical expressions that yield the value of the desired unknown at any location in a body and thus are valid for an infinite number of locations in the body therefore they have infinite degrees of freedom. Now infinite degree of freedom is a concept which is not existing in any of the numerical method used because numerical methods always predict the solution to the problem at some fixed number of predefined points. In the following slides we are going to study the analytical solutions to three types of problem. The first problem has been taken from the field of applied mechanics that is a simple pendulum. The second is a heat transfer problem that is a fin. The third belongs to the area of solid mechanics that is a column. All these three problems are one dimension in nature because they depend upon only one space coordinate. A simple pendulum depends upon the angular displacement theta. Heat transfer depends upon a space coordinate x and the solid mechanics problem that is the problem of a column also depends upon a single space coordinate x. A simple pendulum consists of a bulb of mass m which is attached to the pivot O with the help of a string of length L. When displaced from the mean position by an angle theta and released the bob continues to oscillate with respect to its mean position. The governing equation happens to be a second order governing second order differential equation 
because the displacement theta is differentiated twice with respect to time t and the presence of a term sin theta makes this governing equation a nonlinear governing equation. Generally, this nonlinear equation is converted to a linear equation by making a simple assumption that is theta tends to zero. This assumption makes the oscillation of the pendulum confined to small values about its mean position. The linear form of the nonlinear governing equation now is on display. This equation, the solution to this linear second order differential equation is given by theta as a function of time t is equal to a sine lambda t plus b cos lambda t where lambda is more commonly known as the natural frequency of oscillation of the system given by under root g by l where g happens to be the gravity and l is the length of the bob attached to the uh, string a and b are the two constants which are supposed to be determined for the given boundary condition of the system. Now talking something about the boundary condition, the governing equation which is, to, which is going to be solved is a second order differential equation and as a general rule, the boundary conditions which are going to be used are always one order less than the highest uh, differential appearing in the governing equation. In this governing equation, theta is getting differentiated twice. Therefore, the boundary conditions are going to be one order less than two, that is theta and d theta by dt. Theta is displacement of the bob, while d theta by dt is the velocity of the bob. Both these values are supposed to be prescribed at time t is equal to zero that is at a point from where the oscillation commences. As can be seen that the angular position theta of the bob can be known for infinite values of time t. Therefore, this equation has infinite degrees of, degrees of uh, freedom. The second example which we take happens to be a heat transfer problem of a one dimension fin of length L. In fact, the fin happens to be conical in nature. The left end of the fin is maintained at a constant temperature T naught, while the right end of the film is exposed to the ambient temperature that is T infinity. The lateral surface of the fin are exposed to atmosphere therefore they lose some heat because of convection and then this is a case of internal heat generation g which happens to be a function of x the required governing equation is obviously is the summation of heat exchanges which happens at any point and the equation is on display this again is a second order differential equation because the temperature T is getting differentiated twice with respect to the space coordinate X. Therefore, as far as the boundary conditions are concerned, this the solution of this differential equation is going to require two bonding conditions which can be a combination of temperature at both the ends or it could be temperature at one end and dt by dx at the other end. In this case, the boundary condition is temperature T at x is equal to zero is equal to T naught. This is a boundary condition which is applied at the left end of the fin. At the right end, we are applying a boundary condition of conservation of heat the total amount of heat interaction because of conduction is equal to heat loss because of convection. 
So the summation of these two terms at x is equal to L is equal to 0. x is equal to L is the right end of the fin. The solution to this particular problem is on display and it can be seen that the value of temperature T can be obtained at any given value of x within the fin. Therefore this also is a case of infinite degrees of freedom. The third problem which we take happens to be from the area of solid mechanics. There is a conical column resting on a flat surface. The length of the column is L. The upper end of the column is, exp is exposed to a vertically downward force given by capital P and there is some amount of body force acting in the domain that is G which is a function of X. The governing equation is on display which is applicable for X ranging between 0 to L and the boundary conditions happens to be prescribed in terms of deformation U at u is equal to u at x is equal to l that is the lower end of the column the displacement is fixed therefore the value of u happens to be 0 while at the upper end where the value of x is 0 well the upper end is supposed to be uh, this is basically the force balance equation so with the help of these two boundary equations the governing equation is solved to give the value of displacement as a function of x and it can easily be seen that the displacement can be found for any given values of x. Therefore this particular expression also is a case of infinite degree of freedom. The derivation of the governing equation is not difficult. This is what we engineers have been doing right from the first year of the BTEC course. The derivation of governing equation always is easy whether it is case of one dimension, two dimension, three dimension, steady state analysis or even if it is a transit analysis. But the solution is often difficult due to the geometric and the material complexities. And this is where the numerical methods provide an alternate means of solution. The thing to be observed regarding numerical methods is that the solution obtained via the numerical method is an approximate solution and the solution is obtained at limited points which are predefined in nature. Therefore, the degree of freedom for any numerical method happens to be limited and is not finite and is not infinite. Some observations common to all numerical methods are any numerical method converts a set of differential equations to a set of simultaneous algebraic equations which are going to be solved to obtain the value of unknown at the discrete number of points in the continuum. The thing to be observed is that the solution achieved by any numerical method is close to the exact solution but is not the exact solution. This means that uh, how much accurate the numerical method might be there always is going to remain some error between the numerical solution and the exact solution. Some popular numerical methods are the finite difference method FDM, the finite element FEM, boundary element method commonly known as BEM and recently there has been quite a few methods being developed which lie under the category of mesh free methods. It may be noticed that this particular list is not exhaustive and is only a representative of the numerical methods commonly in use. Now in finite difference method 
the differential existing in the governing equation is replaced by differences. Commonly the differentials which are replaced by differences are being replaced with respect to the forward difference, backward difference, central differencing scheme. They might be one-sided, they might be two-sided, they might be first order, they might be second order. Now coming to FEM, the finite element method is a numerical method for the solution of problems existing in engineering and mathematical physics. This basically is a very crude, very crude definition. More exact definitions are going to follow as we proceed with the lectures. Finite element method was developed originally for the analysis of aircraft structures by NASA. In 1960s, scientists working in NASA wanted to improve, their, improve the designs of their rocketry system. They wanted to have a better estimate of stress and strain existing in rockets so that the design of the rocketry system can be improved. Much of the work was done in MIT in 1960s by persons such as Zinkovich and Klau. The term finite element was coined by Klau in 1960. The first book on the topic of finite element method was written by Zinkovich in the year 1967. And so far we have seen very diverse application of finite element method to every field of engineering. In general, the general nature of the theory of finite element method makes it, makes it possible for a wide range of problem to be solved with the help of finite element method. Typical problems of interest include problems related to structure analysis, heat transfer, fluid flow, mass transport, electromagnetic potential, etc. Problems related to structural areas are problems such as the problems related to stress analysis, buckling, vibration analysis, impact problems. Non-structural problems are problems such as those existing in the areas of heat transfer, fluid flow, distribution of electrical or magnetic potential around antennas and transistors. Now coming to some advantages of finite element method. FEM has the capability of modeling bodies of irregular shapes quite easily. It can handle a wide range of general load conditions without any difficulty. Even bodies with diverse material properties can easily be handled and it can tackle uh, uh, unlimited numbers of boundary conditions. Varying the size of the element makes it possible to use small elements wherever necessary. Alteration of finite element alteration of finite element model is relatively easy and cheap. Dynamics effect can easily be included. Nonlinear behavior existing with large deformation and nonlinear materials can also be handled without any problems. Some commonly available finite element programs are Abacus, ANSYS, COSMOS, LSDYNA, MARC, NISA, STARDYNE. It might be noticed that plenty of these softwares emerged from the basic software which was developed by NASA. 
Some common capabilities of this program include a wide range of animal uh, of element type such as bar, beam, plain stress, three dimensional solid type of analysis which can be done such as a static or dynamic the type of material behavior such as linear elastic or nonlinear type of loading which can be included such as concentrated distributed thermal displacement displacement behavior such as a small and large displacement and buckling data generation such as the creation of mesh nodes elements this basically is pre-processing of the data now once the result have been obtained the results are going to be presented in graphical forms so virtually all of these softwares have a very good capability of plotting the results in graphical form which happen to be very colorful in nature FEM basically deals with three type of problems equilibrium problem or better known as steady state or time independent problems eigenvalue problems where we determine the natural frequencies or model analysis of the problem propagation or transient problem in which we find the value of the unknown as a function of time in equilibrium problem we need to find the steady state displacement or stress distribution if it is a solid mechanics problem temperature or heat flux distribution if it is a heat transfer problem pressure or velocity distribution if it is a problem related to fluid mechanics problems lying in the category of eigenvalues are problems where we find natural frequencies or buckling loads and mode shapes for problems lying in the domain of solid mechanics if the problem is related to fluid mechanics we are going to be concerned with finding the stability of laminar flow and if it is a problem of electrical circuits most of the time we are going to be interested in finding the resonance characteristic propagation or transient problems are time dependent problems such as the response of a body under time varying force in solid mechanics and the response of the body under sudden heating or cooling in the field of heat transfer the working of finite element method can be illustrated in six main steps and these step are remain are going to remain as they are irrespective of the nature of the problem which is being solved the first step is discretization of the continuum the next is the selection of a interpolation function third is finding the elemental properties fourth step is the assembly step fifth is solution of the global equation in uh, solution of the global equation after the application of boundary conditions and the last that is the sixth step is the computation of additional results in the first step the body is discretized into smaller elements which is known as mesh the mesh is described in form of nodal coordinates and elemental connectivities the process of discretization has been illustrated in these two figures in both the figures the same domain has been discretized using square element figure a is a coarse mesh and consists of 41 elements while figure number b is a finer mesh 
and has a total number of 192 elements. In both the discretization process, it can be seen that there happens to be an area which is not included in the discretization process. In fact, this is one of the main sources of, of error in finite element method. All bodies are three-dimensional in nature. They have a certain length, a certain width, and certain height. But depending upon the type of assumptions being used, the analysis of this three-dimensional body can be done as a one-dimensional analysis, a two-dimensional analysis, or a full-fledged three-dimensional analysis. Obviously, if a one-dimensional analysis is being done, the results are going to be approximate, but the solution process is going to be quick. That means you are going to get the solution very quickly. While on the other extreme, if a full-fledged three-dimensional analysis has been carried out, the results are going to be the results are going to be exact or very close to exact but the solution process itself is going to require a large amount of time now here comes a role of the design engineer depending upon his experience a design engineer is supposed to decide which type of analysis is going to suit his design process whether the design process is going to require a one-dimensional analysis or a full-fledged three-dimensional analysis is for the design engineer to decide. Common one-dimensional analysis which have been studied by mechanical graduates in their third semester comprise of one-dimensional analysis of a bar and one-dimensional analysis of a beam. In both the cases, that is a bar and a beam, there happens to be a length, while the other two dimensions are being indicated as area in case, of, in case of a bar analysis and moment of inertia in case of a beam analysis. Both these analyses are one dimensional analysis and give approximate analysis to the, to the problem and they are simple to the extent that solution process can be obtained manually. That means the solution process does not require any computer for evaluating the result. In one dimensional analysis, the body is being represented by line element. Simple line element comprise of a linear element which is shown in the figure on the left and a quadratic element which is shown in the figure on the right. A linear element consists of two nodes that is node number 1 and node number 2 while the quadratic element comprises of three nodes node number 1, 2 and 3. These two elements are generally used to solve problem existing in case of bar and beam elements. Some two-dimensional elements happen to be triangular or quadrilateral in shape. A simple linear triangular element is shown in figure number A which has three nodes located at the corners at the three corners while a linear quadrilateral element is shown in figure number 3 which has four nodes existing at the four corners. In figure number 2 and figure number 4 it may be observed that there are additional nodes which have been located at center of the edges. These two elements are high order elements and are uh, able to represent quadratic behavior of the unknown within the element. Figure shows some of the common three dimensional elements which are in use. Figure number one, number three and number five all have nodes located at their corners. 
and R linear elements while figures in figure number 2 and number 4 have nodes located at their centers and are capable of, of uh, simulating quadratic behavior of the unknown within the element. These elements are normally used for the representation of 3D cases existing in case of stress analysis and thermal modeling. Interpolation function or shape functions as they are commonly known is a single step which is responsible for accurate FEM analysis. Interpolation functions are used to interpolate the field variables over the element. Often polynomials are selected as interpolation functions because they can easily be differentiated and the degree of polynomial which is to be chosen as the interpolation function depends upon the number of nodes assigned to an element. Talking in terms of one dimensional elements, if a one dimensional element has two nodes then the degree of polynomial is going to be 1 that is we are simulating uh, we have a linear element while if the number of nodes happens to be 3 then the degree of the polynomial is 2 that is we have a we now have a quadratic element